In representation of the MA in Natural Resources and Peace, please welcome Femna Rahim Kaven from India, Rebecca Reeves from Canada, and Shannon Thomas from Costa Rica. We are the Natural Resources and Peace class of 2012. <laughs> And we are here to tell you why butterflies don't fly. There is a famous Sufi quote that says, you think you understand one, you must understand two, because one and one make two. But you must also understand and. There is a lot we can learn from the word and, especially the and in between natural resources and peace. The word and, it implies and some. An addition, yes. But deeper than that, what it presupposes is a separation, a dichotomy. So when you say natural resource and peace, what does it really mean? And this is what we set out to find out in our class, which was small enough to be fluid and which was diverse enough to break stereotypes. So as we shared classrooms inside and outside walls, Dete, Shannon, Rebecca, and I, we realized how in resonance we were so often. Us and Mahmoud, Rolain, Rob, Jan, our professors, our Mauricio, we learned together. Student, teacher, everything interchanged. It was an amazing experience. Our journey here at UPeace has been an attempt to more fully understand the intricate relationships between the natural world and the human world. We have actively sought to see the whole picture from various standpoints, sometimes from the muddy trails of the jungle, and other times from the spotless offices of San Jose. In many ways, it has been a process of letting go, letting go of the false simplicities of traditional dichotomies of conservation and development, of nature and humans, of us and them. David Suzuki reminds us, we are nature. There is no distinction. So probing deeper into the systems that got corrupted, quite early itself, it was quite evident the priorities were wrong. The essence and paradigms of the individual, of the market, of the machine were emphasized too much. But that was not where we ended. We probed deeper, and it seemed the false polarities and the hierarchies of those polarities, they seem to be the culprit. When one is not the other, then there is comparison. And when there is comparison, inevitably there has to be a winner. And when there's a winner, there's a more powerful one, a better option. So we thought, we finally concluded, this is the root of all discrimination, of all exclusions. So I can say, on behalf of my two classmates, the ultimate learning that we had here is the unnecessary presence of and between natural resource and peace. Oh, wait, natural resource is not the term we would use, because we have problems with that. Our course educated well enough to be very suspicious of resource. So I restate, wait, nature, peace, they are one and not two. And so itself, acknowledging nature, being nature, being peace, is one and not two different things. They're inseparable. Just as changing and evolving our own selves is inseparable to the larger systemic changes we aspire to bring out in the world that we are going to work in. At orientation, Mahmoud was the last to speak. I remember he reminded all of us to remember nature, always. And I think I was in a few classes and reminded a few people of the importance of nature, repeatedly. <laughs> um, and I think we've also learned that natural resources and conflicts and this war on our planet is, is playing significant, is, is having significant effects in most conflicts. But we also feel that the environment and coming together around her healing is also a great source of peace. Because we are nature, we have the ability to embody the positive qualities of nature. We just need to awaken and listen. Dancing helps too. <laughs> yeah. Earth teaches us to co-create. Every time we step, we are letting go into gravity and co-creating by actively resisting it. By letting go and actively participating, we can transform. When you let go, you open up yourself to a universe full of the winds of possibility and new ways of thinking and being. 
Scientists recently discovered that many butterflies don't actually fly, they surf. Contrary to what was previously assumed, migrating butterflies and moths are not at the mercy of wind, nor do they try to control its effect on them. Instead, they actively choose the winds that carry them up to thousands of miles. Some of us have literally learned to surf here in Costa Rica, but all of us have figuratively learned to surf here at UPs. We have learned to open ourselves up to the winds of diversity and new ideas. We have learned to maneuver ourselves within those winds, both in the calm and the turbulent. What's more, we have learned to use those winds to move ourselves and even sometimes others. Whatever path you have chosen, we trust in your courage to let go and to continue to actively and consciously surf the winds of the world, co-creating with them to transform and move yourselves and others through this beautiful planet closer to a world of shared peace. <laughs> In closing, um, we'd just like to really show immense amount of gratitude for the staff here at UPs and especially our students, our community, our ecosystem. We will forever be entwined. We are so grateful. And with our next breath, ah, we acknowledge and are so grateful for this planet and the life that she gives us. Thank you. Thank you so much.